Something about the modern world, i.e. what we call modernism, starting broadly in the late 18th century with a sudden upsurge of science and technology, which made people think, quite rightly, we can do things that no generation of humankind has ever done before. And from then right through to the invention of plane travel in the early 20th century um, was making people think every few years something new is happening which is enabling us to do more. And that got bundled up, I think, with um, a notion of progress that it was sort of automatic. And from the continent, you get philosophers like Hegel, um, where there is this imminent system. It's just moving forward. And actually, it gets more traction because in the same movement, you get rid of God. God is upstairs or out of sight. And even if he exists, he doesn't intervene down here. So we can see a sort of steady progress. We're making new and better machines. We can do more things. It's all quite extraordinary. And my, I suspect that part of what you describe as the loss of that could map onto what we loosely call postmodernity. That is to say, after the war, after the Holocaust, after the first um, atom bomb, etc., people say, wait a minute, our big stories have let us down. And often those big stories were stories about political progress, and people say, no, that's let us down. And certainly those who pinned their hopes on Marxist utopias and so on, um, that's let them down. But maybe it's part of that same thing as a sort of cultural weariness that we thought the sky was the limit, and actually, literally, we did all that space travel, and then, actually, we've stopped doing that now because what's the point and isn't it a waste of money and so on? And so I just wonder if you would see that as part of that same cultural shift from the modernist progress to the postmodern saying, well, we've just got all these little stories and those big ones are just self-serving power grabs anyway. Um, because if that's so, it puts us actually on the same page because I wrestle with those issues, with that cultural story in my own work as a theologian because I don't think that Christian hope has to do either with modernist progress or with this really denial of all the significant stories in postmodernity. So I mean, we'd both be looking for new ways of doing hope and of how that could happen, uh, which might actually be quite a significant con convergence.